Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I have a bit of a book haul. It's not huge, but it's enough. Um, but I definitely wanted to get this out here before I have to pack up all the rest of my books. And I swear this is the last, these are the last books I'm bringing in my house before we move. But I did just get rid of like 50 some books and so bringing in just this little bit doesn't seem too bad, right? Anyways, we'll get started. So this first book was one I picked up at Barnes Noble. It was on I think the bargain table or I don't know it was only like five or six bucks um, but it's everything she didn't say by Jane Kirkpac Kirkpatrick um, I'm really wanting to get into some other time periods within my historical fiction genre um, and this one takes place in the early 1900s as this husband and wife kind of head west um, along I believe the railroad so it just sounded good and it looked good it was short it held my interest I thought I'd give it a whirl in for six bucks. Why not, right? Um, the next two I picked up, I've picked up for book club reasons. Um, the first one is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This only takes place in the in a matter of 60 seconds as Will is taking the elevator from the seventh floor to the bottom floor, kind of seeking revenge for the death of his brother. It is told in verse. It is very, very awesome. I can't sing praises for this enough. I read this in practically one sitting. I did have to put it down for a little bit, but I could have easily read it in one sitting and it made me think. Oh my gosh, it made me think. It was a beautiful book. The next book I picked up is for my Barnes and Noble book club that meets. It's not the national one, it's just the one we do here. We are gonna read The Cactus by Sarah Haywood. It's our Reese Witherspoon book club pick. It's really pretty too. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I just agreed when someone suggested it, so we'll find out. It says, For Susan Green, messy emotions don't fit into the equation of her perfectly ordered life. She has a flat that is ideal for one, a job that suits her passion for logic, and an interpersonal arrangement that provides cultural and other more intimate benefits. But suddenly confronted with the loss of her mother and the news that she's about to become a mother herself, Susan's greatest fear is realized. She's losing control. Enter Rob, the dubious but well-meaning friend of her, um, of her brother. As Susan's due date draws near and her dismantled world falls further into a tailspin, Susan finds an unlikely ally in Rob. She might have a chance of finding real love and learning to love herself, if only she can figure out how to let go. So, that's for book club. It does sound good. Uh, the next few I picked up and I, I shared this not that long ago in the uh, book list Thursday that we did, but um, I picked these up from the library bookstore when I was there. I grabbed myself another copy of The Shack by um, William Paul Young. I don't know what happened to my copy, and so I needed another one, and I loved this book. So loved this book. Um, this, uh, sorry, <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know, this follows um, a story about a um, Let's see, Mackenzie Allen Phillips, his youngest daughter, Missy, was abducted during a family vacation. Um, they found evidence that she was murdered, and he is just having a really hard time with this. And he gets a letter from God asking him to meet him back at the shack where they found evidence of where Missy was being held for the weekend. And he goes, and he meets with God. And it's a beautiful book. And a beautiful movie, too. Next one is In the Midst of Winter by Isabel um, Allende. This follows the story of Richard, who's a professor in his 60s. He accidentally hits the car of Evelyn, who is an undocumented immigrant from Guatemala. Um, I believe it says, uh, what first seems as an inconvenience takes a more serious turn when Evelyn comes to his house seeking help. At a loss, the professor asks his tenant, um, a fellow academic from Chile, for her advice. The three of lives intertwine where they discover truths about how they have been shaped by the tragedies that they have witnessed. And Richard and Lucia, which is his tenant, will take a chance and unexpected long overdue love. And then the last one is Oxygen by Carol Casella. This follows the story of an anesthesiologist who is very, very good at her job, height of her profession, riding on cloud nine and something goes wrong in the operating room and things happen so again sounded good the last four i picked up when i went to costco i can't i should not be allowed to go to costco by myself 
I needed one thing, one, one thing. And I walked out with that thing and four books, right? All right, first one I have The Dollhouse by Fiona Davis. This sounded really interesting to me. So this takes place at a hotel in 1952. A lot of secretarial school enrollees tend to stay at this hotel. There's a lot of modeling models that stay at this hotel. It's kind of just for women who are career driven. Um, so Darby stays there. She becomes friends with one of the maid and it sounds like something happened. I'm not sure what, but fast forward into the future and it says in half a century later, so 50 years later, um, the hotel is gone or it's turned into a congo. Most of its guests are forgotten, but rumors of Darby's involvement in a deadly skirmish still haunt the halls of the building as surely as the music that floats from the elderly woman's rent control department. What happened? What happened, Darby? I need to know. So that sounded good. Next one I picked up is The Lost Family by Jenna Bloom. Um, 1960s, 60s Manhattan, we have Peter, who is a survivor of Auschwitz and also a very eligible bachelor in town. Um, he's running a restaurant. He's really just concentrating on the restaurant, not really looking for love, but in walks June, who's an up and coming young model, kind of takes him off guard. Um, she's 20 years younger than he is, but they start a courtship. Um, she becomes pregnant, he proposes, but there's still his past he needs to deal with. So sounds like there's definitely some secrets and drama that happened in this book, but again, it sounded really interesting. Um, then I picked up two fantasy books. I picked up Finale by Stephanie Garber. This is the last book in the Carval trilogy. Carval, beautiful, beautiful book that I actually happen to have sitting right here. Follows the story of two sisters who go, finally get tickets to go to Carval, which is this, I don't even know how to describe it. It is how do they describe it in the book? It's this show. It's this this event. It's not a circus, but it has circus vibes. You get a ticket to Carval. You get to go there, and you either get to be part of the experience or you get to observe it. And it's got mazes and magic, and it's just it's awesome. So that's what this one starts out. I have no idea what this is about, nor am I even going to look at it or tell you about it because I don't want to spoil anything. But it's the third book in the trilogy, and I'm so excited for it. I should look. Does it have a map? Please tell me it has a map. Yes, it does. Right there. Gorgeous. The last one I picked up was very on a whim, but we're going to go with it. It is Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. So this kind of follows the life of um, Isabel, who's not the beautiful girl, she's the stepsister, but she cut off her toes so that her foot would fit in the glass slip into Cinderella's shoe. And the prince does discover her deception, and then we kind of go from there. So I thought it was a very cool, interesting take on our Cinderella story. So I was very interested. Plus, it's a beautiful book. So I picked that up as well because, you know, I need more books. Oh, well. That's my little kind of mini summer book haul. I promise I'm not buying any more books till after I move. Let, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts are, where I should start. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.